I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Ezekiel 33, 1-11 Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory, and make him their watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Just as the prophet Ezekiel warned the Israelites of impending judgment from Almighty God, the watchmen of our time, are warning whoever will listen, that God is getting ready to judge an unbelieving and unrepentant world. The Lord Jesus foretold that there would be plagues or pestilences in various places in the last days before he returns, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. Red alert on Wall Street as the prolonged coronavirus-induced sell-off reached a new low on Wednesday. After Monday's record points plunge, the Dow Jones Index ended the day with another huge slump, officially pushing stocks into so-called bear market territory meaning that New York's main indices are now 20% lower than their recent highs. Although most companies took a beating, some were hit particularly hard. Airplane manufacturer Boeing saw a sharp fall in its share price, a reflection of the pain the coronavirus is already putting on the travel industry. Oil prices also took a hit after Saudi Arabia again decided to increase production in its price war with Russia. 
This is the first pandemic caused by a coronavirus. But with the World Health Organization officially declaring COVID-19 a global pandemic, worsening infection rates across Europe and the United States, and no clear plan in sight from the White House by the closing bell, it was a day when again, fears about the coronavirus's impact on the world's economy weighed heavy on investors' minds. I think there is definitely another leg to go with regards to this fear, and it happens more often than not. Investors tend to shoot first and then ask questions later, so we're, uh, we're obviously seeing that pan out as, as we speak. A bear market doesn't always mean that a recession will follow, but with some financial institutions lowering their forecast for economic growth, market watchers say it is a worrying sign. In the last days, the Bible gives a warning to the rich who oppress the laborers as we read in James 5, 1 through 6. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, you have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. Good morning. We're coming on the air now with breaking news in the coronavirus crisis. It's financial news this morning. Take a look at Wall Street this morning. The Dow opened at 9.30 a.m. and trading has been suspended about five minutes later at 9.35 after the financial markets, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones dropped more than 7 percent in the wake of new fears of this coronavirus emergency. You want to go straight to Rebecca Jarvis there at the New York Stock Exchange. The markets were looking for reassurance from President Trump last night. They did not get it. No, George, that's right. And this is now the second time this week we've seen this happen, where the stock market has fallen more than 7% in these first few moments of trading, and the circuit breakers have kicked in. These are like tripwires for the market. Once the market falls by a certain level, 7%, the markets are halted for 15 minutes. So literally right now, the markets are halted for the next 15 minutes while Wall Street gets back on its footing. The idea here being, George, to keep the markets from heading into free fall. And since last night's speech, what you have seen is a precipitous decline in the markets. In fact, we saw it in the futures markets last night immediately during the president's speech. So many here on Wall Street were hoping to hear for more. That's the thing I keep hearing from investors and analysts. They wanted to hear more and more certainty and clarity from the government, George. And, and, and Rebecca, in the wake of the president announcing this travel ban, we've seen the Europeans respond, European banks announcing some more stimulus measures this morning. The question is, what is Congress going to come up with? Can they reach an agreement between Democrats and Republicans? Will the Fed be required to do more lower interest rates again? The last time they tried that last week, there was actually a counter reaction and the markets fell. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the biggest basketball league in the world has been suspended. And star player Utah Jazz Center Rudy Gobert has tested positive for coronavirus. The NBA will be out of action until further notice. Earlier, some franchise owners suggested games be played behind closed doors without fans. Well, Jamel Hill is a sports journalist who writes for The Atlantic. She joins us by Skype from Los Angeles. Really good to have you on the program. Just tell us, I mean, some sports are playing games without people in the stands. Uh, the NBA is saying, no, we're suspending until further notice. How major a move is this from the NBA? Uh, it's a huge move, and, and frankly, it's the only move that they can really make. Um, you know, once you start kind of going down that rabbit hole, uh, Rudy Gobert has tested positive, and then now you have to think about all the teams that the Jazz have played over the last, say, two weeks. I mean, they've been in six different cities, um, so that's a lot of interaction with other league personnel, with other players, other coaches, teams. And I think the NBA did the right thing. And honestly, I think they probably need to go a step further and go ahead and cancel the rest of the season. Because uh, even though they had earlier come to the conclusion that maybe they should just play without fans, you know, the truth is that you can only monitor people so much. You know, all these coaches, players, um, those who would have been around, uh, allowed in the arena, 
they all lead individual lives and you can't account for what they're doing on a day to day basis. So it was only a matter of time before something like this happened concerns that the 2020 Olympic Games may be canceled because of the quickly spreading coronavirus. The Olympic flame was lit this morning in Olympia, Greece. The iconic ceremony was closed to the public, though, because of the deadly virus. The Tokyo Games are just four months away at this point, and Ramiel Inocencio reports from the new national stadium in Tokyo, where the opening ceremony is supposed to take place. The clock is ticking till Tokyo hosts the 2020 Summer Games this July, but Olympic dreams and Olympic size investments could both fall victim to the coronavirus. Fireworks in January heralded the return of the Olympic rings to Tokyo. But now, with just months left, the fear is the games won't even begin. The new national stadium is meant to be the grand centerpiece and venue for the opening and closing ceremonies. Now, this stadium was rebuilt from the old National Stadium at a cost of $1.4 billion. This was, in fact, the site of the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. It can hold about 68,000 people, but that may never happen. That's because mass gatherings around the world are getting canceled. Air travel has also been hit hard with major U.S. airlines cutting flights to Asia. The two airports that service Tokyo, that's Narita as well as Haneda right here, have invested so heavily into upgrades, up to two million tourists are expected to fly in for the Olympics. Now, Tokyo has to house all those visitors, and accommodations from hotels to Airbnbs have already been booked at a premium. The famed Okura Tokyo Hotel, built just in time for the 1964 Tokyo Games, spent an estimated $1 billion for a complete teardown and a total rebuild just in time for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Other major costs are sponsorships and broadcast rights. American companies shelled out about one and a quarter billion dollars for television ads. Exclusive rights to the games cost reported $1.4 billion. And if the games were canceled, the world's third largest economy would take a hit. The probability of recession is very high. Jesper Cole has been tracking Japan's economy for the past three decades. What would be the best case and worst case scenarios if the Olympics were canceled? Look, I mean, first of all, if the Olympics got canceled because the coronavirus is running out of control, trust me, we'll have bigger things to worry about than just the negative impact from the Olympics. We'll be worrying about a global depression. In the economic sense of the word, but also in the emotional. For the 15,000 Olympic and Paralympic athletes who are supposed to fly to Japan this summer. All that sweat could turn to tears. If they were to cancel, it would be uh, disheartening. U.S. Olympian Will Clay won two silver medals in the triple jump at both London 2012 and Rio 2016. Now training in Santa Monica, California for 2020, he tells CBS News athletes are being assured the games are a go. I think the Olympics could show um, the world and unite the world and show everyone that things will be okay. We're coming together and um, we're going to fight this thing. Now, the last time the Olympics were canceled was back in 1944 for World War II. If the games get canceled this year or even postponed, it would be the first for a global pandemic. Tokyo's mayor says that is unthinkable. Japan's Olympics chief says that is inconceivable, at least for now. This is daily life under lockdown in Italy. People employing patience, protection and distance. All good measures that countries should practice, according to the World Health Organization, but not enough, as they declared COVID-19 is now a pandemic. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock, and we're deeply concerned, both by the alarming levels of spread and severity, and by the alarming levels of inaction. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. What started in China has now spread to more than 100 countries, but 90% of cases are spread over just four nations. Iran is one of them where more than 300 people have died. South Korea is another where efforts to stop the spread of the virus have so far failed. It seems the world has missed the window of containment. In Italy, the government has imposed further restrictions, closing all stores, bar food shops and pharmacies. 
This is a crisis not just for the country's creaking health system, but also its economy. Italy will still remain a unique region. Italy can find, but now we are also closing down all commercial activities except for grocery stores and pharmacies. There is no need to run to buy food in supermarkets. There's fear too in France as the number of cases creep up. Children still in school are encouraged to wash their hands by the health minister himself, but the virus has already reached the heart of government. The culture minister is infected and five others are being tested. President Macron avoided shaking hands as he prepares to move the country to phase three of its response, closing more schools and restricting transport. Across the continent, classrooms are emptying. Spain, France and Germany have shut schools in their most affected regions, while Italy, Greece, Romania and Ukraine have sent home their entire student populations. As Germany confirmed its third death from the virus, the government's message was that people must make sacrifices to their social lives to protect the elderly. Warning COVID-19 will test healthcare systems across Europe. We have to understand the virus is here. There's no immunity from it. 60 to 70 percent of the population could be infected if the situation continues. In the UK, a health minister has tested positive for COVID-19 and is self-isolating. Despite being in contact with her last week, Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he does not need to be tested. His message is business as usual. And to help, the annual budget promised $39 billion to ward off a coronavirus recession. The WHO says countries still have the power to change the course of this pandemic, but what is inevitable is that cases will continue to climb. Washington state this evening where at least 29 people have now died. The governor now issuing a series of mandates tonight, including limiting visitors to nursing homes. And tonight, images of families peering through windows to check on their loved ones. A resident of the Life Care Center in Kirkland visiting by phone with her daughter and son-in-law seated outside the window there. And in Oakland, California tonight, passengers are still coming off that cruise ship taken to four sites in the U.S. ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Guppin, from California tonight. Tonight, in the epicenter of the nation's coronavirus outbreak, the virus ferociously attacking the elderly. With Seattle silenced and families left to peer into nursing homes for a glimpse at family members or blow kisses from afar, news that 10 nursing homes and care centers now report cases of the virus. The grim reality is that uh, for the elderly, COVID-19 is almost a perfect killing machine. 22 of the state's 26 fatalities in the life care center alone. And there, you can see workers from a disaster recovery team in those hazmat suits entering the facility in an attempt to disinfect it. In the hopes of staving off more fatalities, Washington Governor Jay Inslee closing schools, banning groups of over 250, and warning those violating the bans. What are the penalties exactly for not abiding by the ban? The penalties are you might be killing your granddad if you don't do it. The governor saying the fatalities have mostly struck people who are both elderly and ill. And San Francisco taking those similar measures, banning groups of over a thousand from congregating. And in nearby San Jose at the airport, three TSA agents contracting the virus. 40 miles away in Oakland, the Grand Princess still dockside. Offboarding passengers for the third consecutive day. Teams in hazmat suits processing them. So far, more than half of the passengers taken off. But according to some of the passengers, that processing ahead of quarantine has been too slow. Nothing is happening again. So let's get back to Matt Gupman again with us tonight. And Matt, we saw something today that drew immediate attention. It really drove home uh, why officials say we yeah. must slow the spread of this disease. Take a look. I know you saw it, Matt. What many call the need to flatten the curve. There's a line through the middle of this. You can see the red there. The forecast, if we don't take protective measures, that spike above the line there are the, the people who would not be able to get into hospitals around this country. The blue is that as this is spread out over time. It keeps the number at least uh, somewhat more manageable for hospitals across this country. And Matt, that's why authorities are trying to buy some time with what they call social distancing. For you and me, that just simply means uh, informing the public to try to stay away from crowds here. 
That's right. And ideally, they would have therapeutics and vaccinations to both flatten the curve and delay it. But they don't have that. So they're banning crowds, closing schools, anything to avoid a lot of human contact. And the reason for that, David, is they do not want the public health care system to be overwhelmed. But we are already seeing a faint glimmer of that. The president today warning that he foresees a shortage in protective masks for health care workers. There's this panic regarding the coronavirus here in America. I have to ask you, you're in L.A., I'm here on the other side of the coast. Do you think it's justified, this panic and this idea of basically people going and stocking up on toilet paper and Tide Pods, millennials, I think is what your, your tweet said earlier today. Is this all justified, the type of panic that we're in at this point? Well, I always think when the, the, the most emblematic thing about a worldwide panic and a pandemic is that you go out to get toilet paper, <laughs> I, I, I don't know that that's quite the worst panic that I've ever seen. Uh, listen, let's face facts. We live in a social media era where people think every half thought, every musing, <laughs> every mental hiccup uh, should be put out and you know, chiseled into the edifice of the world. We take ourselves way seriously. We act like we're all-knowing, omniscient, and we're not. And I can't tell you anything about this thing, except I'll try to wash my hands more during the day. Uh, that being said, listen, if it's, if it's the end of the world as we know it, guess what? At some point, we're about to be humbled and reminded that in the overall scheme of the universe, uh, we're kind of uh, gnats on the pachyderm's back, so to speak. It's sometimes hard to understand why our loving and merciful God would display such anger and wrath toward his people. But remember this, God's punishments always have the goal of repentance and restoration. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. In these verses of scripture, we see God using disaster to draw his people to himself, to bring about repentance and the desire to come to him as children to their heavenly father. The spread of viruses such as Ebola and the coronavirus are just a foretaste of pandemics that will be part of the end times. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The two witnesses will have power to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire, as we read in Revelation 11:6. These have power to shut heaven, so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Seven angels will pour out seven bowls of plagues in a series of final judgments on an unrepentant and unbelieving world in Revelation chapter 16. For those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, disease should be a reminder that life on this earth is fragile and can be lost at any moment. As bad as pandemics are, hell will be far worse. The Christian, however, has the assurance of salvation and the hope of eternity because of the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us, as we read in Isaiah 53:5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Are any of you suffering from end times fatigue? Are world events weighing heavily on your mind? Are the everyday wars and rumors of wars government uprisings, violence, wickedness, and extreme weather events making you long for Jesus' return? If you said yes to these questions, you are not alone. I want to encourage those of you who are growing weary. As much as we want Jesus to return, God has a perfect plan. God wants as many people to be saved as possible, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 8, and 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, in a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There are five responses we should have concerning Bible prophecy in the end times. The first is obedience. 
Jesus said this in John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Christians need to be living holy lives, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 10 through 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. The second response is worship. Our worship on earth will one day become worship in heaven, as we read in Revelation 5, 8 through 10. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. The third response is proclamation. The message of God's salvation and the truth of the rapture and Christ's second coming need to be proclaimed for all to hear, especially to those who don't yet believe. Romans 10:17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We must give everyone the chance to turn to God and be saved from his coming wrath. The fourth response is service. All believers should be diligent about carrying out God's will and performing good works. Part of Christ's judgments will be of the works performed by believers. Those works do not determine a Christian's acceptance into heaven, but they do show what each follower of Jesus did with the gifts given to a believer by God. The Apostle Paul says this concerning this coming judgment, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10 the fifth response is fellowship, as we read in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The last response to God's prophetic word is watching and praying, as we read in Luke 21.36. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus continually tells us to be ready for his coming, which could happen at any time, as we read in Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. While watching, Luke tells us how Christians are to be living their lives, as we read in Luke 21, 34, and 35. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. There is coming a time when we will no longer grow tired of the end times, as we read in Isaiah 40, 28-30. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God will remove every tear from our eyes, and there will be no more pain, as we read in Revelation 21.4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.